When you die, it does not mean that you lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live, why you live, and in the manner in which you live. Few individuals embody Scott's words better than Mo Gabba, a young man who loved sports and through that passion impacted countless lives in his community. He had a power about him that was so authentic, so deep, so beyond all the exteriors that we tend to think of in life that you just wanted to be next to him. It, it was nothing shy of pure magnetic light. He had a huge impact on, on all of us in, in many different ways. And whether you were able to, to meet him and get to know him or you just heard his story, I think that's one of the most special things about Mo and something and part of his legacy that will always live on. Let's do this! <laughs> Fans, please join us in welcoming Mo Gabba. Yeah! Okay, Mo, whenever you're ready, it's your pitch. Let's do this! Play ball! <laughs> Mosilla Kingsley Gabba, affectionately known as Mo, was born on January 26, 2006, in Baltimore, Maryland. He developed a love for Baltimore sports, and that, combined with his magnetic personality, was how many were first introduced to him back in 2015 when he was just nine years old. I learned about Mo just listening to talk radio in town and Mo would show up as a frequent caller and it would just kind of catch your ear because you could tell it was a kid, but he had unusual insight into human nature. And he also had this joyful lilt to his voice that made it so delightful to listen to this kid. Anytime you would hear Mo calling in to one of the talk shows, you would listen to him because he always had something remarkable to say. I first heard about Mo from our PR department, and uh, they said there was this kid, and he's got great opinions on the Ravens and the Orioles, and people just love him, and they uh, can't get enough of him. I listened to him a little bit, and I, I couldn't get over his voice, you know what I mean? His voice, that high voice, and just a beautiful voice. Just thinking positive is all you should, all you can't, or all you can do really. All you gotta do is just think positive and you'll get through it. You were just drawn to him. He had a power about him that was so authentic, so deep, so beyond all the exteriors that we tend to think of in life that you just wanted to be next to him. It, it was nothing shy of pure magnetic light. This young man is one of the nicest boys I've ever met in my entire life. Before he could even celebrate his first birthday, Mo was forced to overcome serious obstacles. He was diagnosed with bilateral retinoblastoma, a malignant tumor of the retina, and lost his eyesight at just nine months old. He would continue to battle cancer multiple times throughout his childhood. Despite the challenges he faced, Mo's resilient spirit caught the attention of more than just fellow Baltimore sports fans. The organizations themselves took notice, including Heather Darney, the Vice President of Community Relations and Executive Director of the Ravens Foundation. Heather and her team found the perfect way to show Mo he was truly a part of the Ravens family. It was such a special day. So it was our crucial catch game where we have special honorees that are cancer survivors, patients that are battling cancer. And so obviously it, it was a no brainer to, to think of Mo as an honorary captain because he's just such an incredible triumph that we wanted to recognize in all the battles that he'd been facing. And he was able to come out and be our honorary captain on the field with our team captains to be able to participate in the coin toss. And then it was just kind of a special tribute that we had to Mo that he was able to see while he was on the field. And he loved the atmosphere of the game. During the crucial catch game, Mo had the opportunity to join his friend and voice of the Ravens, Jerry Sandusky, in the booth. It was his first time ever in a broadcast booth, and it gave him the chance to start his sports broadcasting career. I promise you I'd put a headset on and welcome you to the game. Good to have you with us, buddy. Thanks for having me, Jerry. <laughs> so how exciting is this, right? Your first trip to the, to the broadcast booth? Big day today, huh? I've never been in a broadcast booth of any game before. This is, this is, this is awesome. Jared Johnson was my color commentator, former Ravens linebacker, and I, Mo came, and he, he, he 
was with us for an entire quarter of, of a game. And the thing that struck me most profoundly about Mo was when you listen to him on the radio, Mo always had human insights that most of us miss. And I remember thinking, here's a young man who's blind, who's taught us all a better way to watch sports. Once we got Mo in the booth, we put a headset on him. You know, I was gonna to talk to Mo and I was gonna to try to time the answer so things would work with the flow of the play, which is tricky to do under the best of circumstances. I was concerned that like, how was Mo gonna know when to talk and when to lay out so that the play can be described. He was the most talented person I think I've ever been in a booth with. What's it feel like to be part of this team? Uh, it's, it's really awesome because being a part of the team is nice. Everybody's like cheering me on with like, everything I'm going through right now. So I know you've been on a tough stretch. You've been undergoing chemo, treating the cancer. And I, I got news for you. I, I've never cared for cancer and nobody does. But I feel sorry for cancer because you're going to kick its butt again, aren't you? Yeah. That, <laughs> that's what I like to hear, Mo. Yeah. Here's a young man who couldn't see the action, but knew exactly when to talk, knew exactly when to lay out, and could extrapolate from the crowd noise what had happened. So I was in awe. And we did this entire interview in and out of plays with a young man who couldn't see anything and yet showed us everything. I, I, I'll never forget that. As the 2019 NFL Draft approached, the Baltimore Ravens had something special and historic planned for their number one fan. We have an announcement to make. We're, we're inviting Mo to announce our fourth round draft pick at our draft best event at the Inner Harbor to be the guy that announces the event. What? Really? I never we're going that to announce the fourth round pick at the draft fest to the world at Ravens Draft Fest. What do you think? I'd like to do that. Yeah. Yeah, right. there you go. Right. Mo Gabba, you're going to be announcing buddy. that draft pick alongside the Baltimore Ravens. When, and you know what? There's no better person to announce a Baltimore Ravens draft pick than a diehard Baltimore Ravens fan, local broadcast legend, sports legend like Mo Gabba. We didn't know who our pick would be. So it's really interesting because when you get the, the pick, we have just blank cards one of Mo's teachers that came and helped us and we had to get a brailler and have her be able to write it in braille very quickly so that he could announce it so it was a lot of fun but it was definitely a little tense of just okay making sure we, we had it all correct and he was able to to quickly be able to announce it he did it perfectly and it was just such an exciting moment he had a huge crowd around him in the inner harbor when he made the pick and that was such a special moment for him he totally nailed it it was just electric it was like hitting you know, a Grand Slam home run, and it was like that, kind of a moment. And the whole room just went absolutely crazy and choked up at the same time. And hearing his voice, it was just fun because everybody got to see what we saw. Welcome back to Baltimore. We're live in the Urban Harbor for the next selection in the 2019 NFL Draft. And we're here to make some history. Mo Gabba is going to be the first person to ever announce a draft pick written in Braille. Mo, take it away. With the, oh, sorry. <laughs> With the 123rd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Baden Powers, Oklahoma, guard! All right, Mo! Mo was so proud to be the first person to use a Braille reader to announce a pick. And I think it was his way of teaching us all, don't think you see people. And don't think you see people based on what you think are their deficiencies. Mo showed up to that draft and used the Braille reader and announced Ben Powers with all the level of joy and excitement that the commissioner uses on naming the first pick in the draft. I would say more so than the commissioner uses on the first pick of the draft. And you watch him in that moment and he was a, a fan who was so connected to the game and he could feel the, the the joy that he was extending to Ben Powers, letting Ben Powers know he was a Baltimore Raven. What's up? How you doing? <laughs> you know who Powers. I am? Ben Powers. Me? <laughs> Here, let me get a hug. How you doing, buddy? Good. <laughs> Man, you killed it. <laughs> I've been wanting to talk to you since since you drafted me, man. <laughs> In March 2020, Trey Mancini, an outfielder on the Baltimore Orioles, announced that he like Mo, had cancer. 
I'm really looking forward to being on the road to recovery and I'm, I'm so thankful for our medical staff, our team trainers, all the doctors that have helped me this week. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful we caught this one I did through a simple blood test. So um, I'm feeling really grateful for that. When Mo found out, he made sure to send Trey some words of encouragement. Trey, I hope you're, do I hope you're feeling well. Hope you have a good birthday. I, I just want to tell you how much you mean to me. You're like the brother I never had. I hope you um, hope you're feeling well, and I hope we can hang out sometime. Uh, see you later. Bye. You know, it's it's somebody that I want to model myself after, and and you know, it's definitely a disease where you want to stay as positive as possible because, yeah, like either feeling sorry for yourself or you know, being upset that that it happened to you is just not going to help. It, it's really not. So, um, and Mo's kind of taught me that more than anybody. Mo's cancer continued to spread as he was preparing to graduate from middle school. As his school planned a special drive-by parade to celebrate, it didn't take long for word to spread to the Orioles and Ravens who wanted to get in on the surprise. That was a really special day. So we had heard about the parades that his family was looking to do and, and friends were looking to do, uh, getting his school involved. It's just a no brainer. And we have a great connection with the Orioles. And so we had Bradley Bozeman and his wife, Nikki, out to visit him. We were able to get Poe and the mar uh, marching band was there and some of our cheerleaders because we wanted them to be able to hear how, how loud it was. We wanted him to be able to hear how special it was. <laughs> Hello, just the overwhelming support that he received that day was something that was just magical I mean, in terms of all of these people coming out and showing their love for him. Not a lot of people have this much support and me having it makes me feel, makes me feel proud of myself. Mo came outside of his apartment and there was a miles long tribute where people just lined up in their cars and drove by and waved to Mo and had balloons and then he waved back and this thing, this lasted for hours. I feel really special, really special. Like even, even during all the coronavirus stuff, I feel really special about it. Cause we're technically, we're technically breaking rules, but it's for a good cause. So I'm happy. It was this spectacular tribute to this young man who we all knew was never going to see high school. We all knew he would never see another first day of school. We knew this, he was down to weeks of life and there was not a second of sadness. I wasn't expecting all of this. I really wasn't. I know people love Mo, but this is beyond anything I could ever imagine. And I'm eternally thankful to everybody for all the support and uh, just prayers and everything. Like, this means the world to us. In recognition of your incredible dedication, loyalty, spirit, and passion, the Baltimore Orioles and the Oriole Advocates are proud to announce that you, Mosilla Mogaba, have been elected into the Orioles Hall of Fame oh. as the second ever recipient of the Wild Bill Hagee Award, honoring the most dedicated fans of the Orioles. Like so much about Mo Gabba, even the final day of his life was unique. A collision of sorts, emotions that rarely collide, at least not that closely. Both celebration and sadness, separated only by hours. Just shortly after learning the Orioles had elected him to the team's Hall of Fame, Mo Gabba passed away tonight at the age of 14. In Mo's final hours, his focus wasn't on his most recent accomplishment. Instead, only one person was on his mind. His whole focus was on his mom. You know, he was worried. I think it's the only time I've heard him express genuine disappointment. He was disappointed in himself at leaving his mom behind.
As news of Moe's passing spread, tributes poured in across the city of Baltimore. I understand uh, how close some of our players uh, were to him, how much he meant to this organization. Um, I know the relationship he had with Trey as well as others. And, and this is a really tough day um, for everybody here. We felt like he was a part of the team. You know, every time, you know, he would be out there at the practice um, facility, you know, I, I would just, you can just feel it. Like when you, whenever you go by him, uh, you know, you shake his hand, you know, you hear him talking and stuff like that. You're like, dang, man, I, I wish he was able to like express things more. You know, he was able to see all this stuff, like what's going on, you know, all the love he got around him. And, you know, I mean, I'm just like sad, you know, it, it just, he, he, his life got cut short. At m and Bank Stadium, the Ravens planned a special tribute to honor Mo. When the Ravens play today, it will be here in an empty stadium. However, there is going to be one familiar face in the stands, not just a familiar one, but a significant one. We are, of course, talking about Mo Gabba, Baltimore's super fan. The Ravens have filled one section of their stadium with 575 photo cutouts of Mo Gabba. It's called Mo's Rose. It was really powerful. Like, as we walked out of our tunnel, the left corner, and you would see it just basically the whole, you know section full of mo pictures, and it got, it got kind of more too. You know, it kind of grew as the games went on. But on game day, the thing that I noticed was like you kind of see him there. You know, he might be looking over there. Then there'd be a, a wind that would blow, like a breeze would blow, and all of a sudden the pictures would come to life. They would start, they'd move. You know what I mean? And it looked like people. It looked like a bunch of mo's moving around, like coming to life. I know it was just wind but it seemed like so much more in that moment because it, it felt like Mo was there. It was a hard year to broadcast. You're broadcasting in an empty stadium where there's no fans. And because of the pandemic, we couldn't travel. So for Ravens road games, I'm broadcasting with my partners in literally an empty stadium. And you know, it's easy to start thinking, God, this is really hard. And every single time I would start to just kind of slide down that slope I would look to the end zone, see Moe's Rose, and think, never heard that kid complain once. I'm sure not gonna start now. That's the Mo impact. That's Mo Strong, that's Mo's Rose. They, they've renamed a street between the two stadiums, Mo Gabba Way. And I think we all wanna find ways to keep that spirit that is Mo Gabba alive, because not merely to pay tribute to Mo but for purely selfish reasons of how good Mo made us all feel. I think that was maybe the greatest magic of Mo Gabba. In his presence, you felt better. You thought you were doing something to make this young man who was had so much going against him in life, you thought you were gonna do something to make him feel better. Every single time, he made you feel better. Because of the pandemic, Super Bowl 55 offered a unique viewing experience. Cardboard cutouts mixed with real life fans. Among them was a cutout of Mo. I was so excited to see Mo at the Super Bowl. But it reminds you he's gone. And that you're not going to hear him on the radio. You're not going to see him at a game. You're not going to see him at a fundraiser. You're just not going to see him. And it was just such a joy to, to see Mo. And so when. I saw that cutout of Mo at the Super Bowl. I heard his voice, I felt his touch, and I missed him. He was just such a true embodiment of how incredible sports can be. And you saw it with the Orioles and you saw it with the Ravens, but just having something for him to look forward to, to talk about on the radio, all of that stuff for sports for him was such a light that it just reminds you and makes you so honored to be working that type of business to where hopefully we can provide that light for people who are going through tough times, whether it's an escape from that to, to kind of focus on the game or if we can reach out and offer some encouragement. I think it's, it's just something that I don't take for granted. And I think Mo was a, a big time reminder of that and somebody that will certainly live within our hearts for a long, long time. He just never gave up and he didn't want anybody to worry about him. He just wanted to live every day like what's the best day of his life. You know, you have moments where you, you're dealing with stuff and you're fighting through things and there's an intensity to it. And I'm sure he had those moments too where he was fighting through his treatment and things like that. And there's an intensity to that. And yet through it all, just have, his heart was always just such a great place. I think he touched so many of us in so many different ways. 
and even staff members and people who weren't able to meet Mo personally, I think that just his passion, uh, his positivity, he faced so many battles and was constantly fighting adversity and he would always have a positive outlook about it. And he would always be happy and excited about the next thing. And, and even when he'd get down, he never got that down. And it was easy to see even in just simple moments with him and his mom, Sansi, that they just, they were living life to the absolute fullest and they were not going to let these tough diagnoses stop him from anything that he was going to do. He had a huge impact on, on all of us in, in many different ways. And whether you were able to, to meet him and get to know him or you just heard his story, I think that's one of the most special things about Mo and something and part of his legacy that will always live on. Whatever your spiritual religious beliefs are, if you believe in a higher power, and I do, you felt that in the presence of Mo Gabba. I can't explain it. But I do know this, he taught a lot of us, look past the exterior, because what's real is deeper than that. And not only is it deeper than that, it endures when the exterior is no longer there. The spirit lives forever, it's eternal. And Mo's spirit is so bright, it will shine forever.